Hello, this is a Bluthner Upright Piano. It made in 1910 and has come in to, uh, as a part exchange to see if we can make anything of it, if we want to restore it. Uh, the most important thing here uh, when we're considering whether we're going to work on a piano is the style. And this is an overdamper piano. Uh, Bluth has made overdampers in right up to about 1920 uh, on upright pianos. And the problem is that near the top of the damping here, it really doesn't shut off very well at all. You can hear that. So we tend not to work on any overdampers because they don't sell for very much. Now here's a Bluth, 13 year old, years old, 1897, but it was also an, an overdamper, but we've converted it. So this piano's got a brand new underdamper system. There's the dampers underneath the hammers. If we look back at the other one in a minute, we'll see the difference. And now if we play it around here, the, the cutoff is, is like a modern piano, very clean cutoff. There's not many signs left that it was an overdamper. Here you see this hole here, that was where the overdamper system went. And the side here too, you can see where the, where the damper system went. Yeah. Back to the overdamper, the dampers are too near the top of the string, so at the same point on the piano, it's really echoey. It's not so bad at the bottom. So both of the dampers, you see the dampers are over the top of the hammers, you can't see the hammers. That's why it's called overdamper. It's, bit, it's better there as we can carry on up. and worse until it's hardly damping it's just too near the top see there's the dampers right near the top of the string and hardly hardly making any difference there's the one next to it now of course in some romantic music it doesn't really matter so much but a lot of music especially with staccato that really isn't a good enough cut off here are the same notes played see complete dampening damping proper damping as you get in modern pianos in fact, they've got two extra dampers on this too. Back to the overdamper. See, hardly any cut off there at all. Now, we may still have been able to make something of this piano, but unfortunately, the tuning pins are loose as well. And I discovered some individual ones, but here, here the octave there. That's a giveaway, but the individual ones are out of tune. So these tuning pins are just about, uh, just about to, to go down. As soon as I touch it, it goes right down, you see and consequently it's not, not going to hold its tuning. We could possibly set the tuning pins further in, but really um, we're, not, uh, we're not convinced enough about that. Sometimes if we were asked to, we'd do that for a client's piano, but uh, for our own stock, we wouldn't do that. Uh, we have to change the tuning pins. And on the other blues now, we actually changed the tuning block behind here as well. So the tuning block behind here um, on this one has been replaced as well. So the tuning pins are really, really tight, like a new piano really. So back to the one we're assessing. It's a shame, really, because somebody's put hammers on, and the hammers are quite good. Um, and also re redone, re restored the action. You can see the new tapes here as well. Um, so, but unfortunately, because the loose tuning pins really means we can't take it on. Uh, it's not worth us taking on to restore. Um, around here, I was just going to play this area. The blues tend to be not quite so well matched as they could be. Too bad. We'll listen to the other one. This is a different style with the copper strings before the break point, and it's slightly, slightly patchy. So if, if that's the case before you read, uh, before you fit the new underdamper system, then you won't get rid of that. So it's worth bearing in mind. The other break point, however, really perfect. Sometimes at these break points you get problems. Just thought I'd mention this is a Beckstein that we've restored. Again, new rest plank there as well. And uh, this is an old 1902 Beckstein, and uh, Beckstein never did overdampers. I don't really know why Blutner and uh, Ebox, another very good mate, Gors and Kalman, they all did overdampers. Good pianos, but overdampers. So I'm not quite sure why that should be. At the same time, Beckstein was doing underdampers like everyone else and like the modern action. There's a new Foric. The action's no, no better than the Blutner. Uh, so the standardised modern uh, action was an underdamper. So that's a brief assessment of a Bluthner 1910 upright piano, but it's an overdamper and also some of the tuning pins are loose. So for those reasons, we won't be uh, taking it on to work on them. That's some very good factors. The action's reasonably good hammers put on and, um, and the keys are reasonable condition as well. But uh, the, the overdamper means that while it sounds reasonable here, it's not terribly echoey around here, 
get a, a lot of echo. You can hardly tell the difference between the damped one there and the undamped one there. And really, not suitable for a lot of playing. But for romantic style of playing. extremely good mate, uh, whereas other mates like Steinway, Beckstein, never made overdampers. So uh, if I don't see anyone in the trade who can shed more light on that. But at the same time, there were, uh, it was in, in the, the late 19th century, Steinway's, Becksteins were making underdampers, Bluthans were making overdampers. So it's a bit of a mystery to me. I think, you know, the romantic style of music... so much cut off but when you're going to play you can hear, hear very clearly the echo there we'll compare that with a with a, an under damper piano so here's the 1897 Blutner that we've converted to an under damper and uh, now we have no problem with the echo cuts off beautifully and still great for style makes no difference. You can use the pedals to join the notes together. So that's the comparison between the over damper and the under damper piano and uh, also the case where it has to be really good for us to do this conversion because um, it's very expensive as you can imagine and also repinning and uh, putting a new tuning block in. So thank you very much for listening.